Warning, this episode may contain content that is not suitable for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Yeah, look, this shows the hypocrisy of liberalism. You know, liberals are the ones who decry conservatives for not believing in science. And yet, when it comes to this issue of gender, it is the liberals who are denying science. Transgendered bathrooms have come out of nowhere and are being jammed down our throat. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, the next stop on this train is pedophilia. Miriam Heine from the University of Würzburg, and she claims that pedophilia is a natural sexual orientation, just like heterosexuality. You describe yourself as a pedophile. You admit that you are a pedophile. Yes. What this is about, when you really go around about this, what this is, this is the mainstreaming of sexual capacity for people of all ages. What they're doing here is not necessarily trying to argue it's okay for adult men to have sex with little kids. What they're getting around about here is the idea that little children, little children as young as five and six years old, younger, should be able to have sex with whoever they want. But this is predictable. When we refuse to draw the line anywhere with regards to these progressive initiatives, they're gonna take, you're gonna give them an inch, they're gonna take miles and miles and miles. Find out on this episode of LED Live. Light exposing darkness. You know, we keep asking, where do you draw the line? Where is this gonna go? And here we see Glenn Beck, he makes a prediction and then right afterwards we see a, a liberal millennial say that he's just insane. This, you know, he's out there, he's nuts. Transgendered bathrooms have come out of nowhere and are being jammed down our throat. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, the next stop on this train is pedophilia. I guarantee it. I mean, the guy is an absolute moron, a legendary moron. And now here comes this genius prediction. I guarantee you pedophilia is next. Name one prominent liberal who's argued pedophilia. Yeah, let's go for it. So I don't, I don't disagree. This guy probably is not pushing for pedophilia. A lot of the people who are pushing for this trans movement are probably not pushing for pedophilia. But like we keep saying, where do you draw the line? Somebody else is gonna say, I'm a dog. You must respect my rights. I identify as an infant. Who's to tell that person they can't have a relationship with a kid? Well, I identify as a six-year-old. You can't tell me by law. You can't tell me I'm not a right. six-year-old. I'm thinking, how are we going to regulate this? Because what stops me from saying, oh, for this five-minute period where I need to use the bathroom, I identify as a man, so I just use the bathroom, and I come out, and then, no, I'm actually identify as a woman mm. right now. You know, how do you, how do you regulate who is um, That's actually trans and who's not. That's actually what's happening in the sports world. If you follow like this whole um, males identifying as females and then going and winning all these things, there's nothing that says right after they're done competing, if they don't go back and identify with the okay. male, yeah. they have to give back everything that they won. Yeah. So that's actually happening. They're playing like they're a girl, winning all these things and then right after they're done, hey, I'm a male. I'm well, like I think male. they are saying that you have to be transitioning for a year. But look at... To get into it. Yeah, but look at Bruce Jenner, who's now Caitlyn Jenner. He won all those medals as a man. But in his mind, he's been a woman all this time. So technically, he couldn't have won those medals because you're not allowed. As a woman, you're not allowed to play and win those. Interesting. So does he have to give all those back now? So, I mean, is he really... Is Glenn Beck really just out there? I mean, is, is making this prediction, is it... Is it really that far-fetched? Yeah. Well, it's interesting what he's saying, though. The lesbian gay movement versus the transgender and how it's kind of taking us by storm. Mm. He's making valid points. Exactly. So here's, I mean, here's some news things that are coming up now. That was probably a couple years ago when he said that. Pedophilia is natural and normal, according to an academic presentation last year at the University of Wait For It, Cambridge. The defense of pedophiles is, well, a disturbing trend, and arguments are being made by some university academics at summer conferences. According to Philip Tremovich, a professor at a university in Japan, on the prevalence of pedophilia, the majority of men 
are probably pedophiles and hebophiles, and that pedophilic interest is normal and natural in human males. Sun News contributor Marissa Semkiev joins me now in studio. Okay, so there are probably a lot of guys watching this right now and saying, oh, I'm not a pedophile. I have no idea. And by the way, uh, the, the word hebophile refers to people who are in between 11 and 14. Um, Marissa, do you think that there is an increasing push from academics to, let's say, push the boundaries when it comes to what's acceptable uh, in child sex, essentially. Not just academics, actual political groups with sort of political objectives. But yes, absolutely, there are members of the political and, or rather, academic establishment that are trying to push the limits on the exact stability of child sex. Um, back in 2012, for instance, in the House of Commons, Dr. Jizenjem, he's a professor and psychologist at the University of Montreal. This is when they were debating uh, how to amend the criminal code with respect to um, sexual crimes against children. I want to pull up a board of what he said here. He said, pedophiles are grappling with what is equivalent to a sexual orientation, just like another individual may be grappling with heterosexuality, crazy, or even homosexuality. And if we agree on the fact that true pedophiles have an exclusive preference for children, which is the same as having a sexual orientation. So he uses language like sexual orientation there. That is not uncommon. Dr. James Cantor of CAMH, I recall in an interview with the Toronto Star, said, uh, referred to pedophilia as a sexual orientation. Now this is Canada news because mm -hmm. Canada is really pushing this. You must talk about transgender in school as early as kindergarten. Um, we saw that the government can take your kids away if you don't allow them to transition or whatever. Uh, I saw an article of a 13-year-old girl where a school counselor uh, counseled her that she should have the sex change or she should go through the transformation and they told the parents there's nothing you can do about it and we will press charges if you try to. Regardless of, of whether a person is predisposed to be that way or not, the pedophilia forces itself on other people. And that is something that has to be protected because a child cannot defend themselves, mm -hmm. you know, against a full-grown male, a full-grown female. You know, they, they have no defense. They are young, they are weaker, and it doesn't matter what that person's preference is, if it's that age group, you cannot, you know, force yourself on other people. There has to be boundaries. And a, a child looks up to an adult and will believe a lot of things adults say and can be easily manipulated into doing things. I think there's enough evidence to show that parent, or adults that have molested children, what that psychologically does to that child, um, I mean, there is plenty of cases where these kids' lives are destroyed because of some adults' activities with that. And, and it's not like the person, the perpetrator, his life was totally destroyed. It's, it's more of a damage to the, to the young child. And historically speaking, if you look at um, like Rome, when Rome really truly fell, I mean, sexuality was, was one of the things that kind of precursed that whole demise of, of that society. Um, and, and, and all throughout history, if you look at the different societies that had very um, loose ideals on this type, this type of a topic. Um, it was never a good ending. Yeah, what do you say to, to uh, people who have grown up that happened to them and their, and their parents, you know, they were abused or molested? I mean, you're just supposed to say, well, I'm sorry, that was their preference. Yeah. And uh, we can't deny them, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah. there's a fragmentation that happens in the mind and, and so many of those people go on to abuse drugs, you know, they abuse alcohol, they, they struggle with depression, you know. I don't, I don't think we can just have a free-for-all and say, well, you know, whatever you want because it's what you identify with. Mm. Do you think that, every, you know, everyone else has boundaries except for trans people? And what I mean by that is if they go ahead and say that pedophilia is a sexual orientation, which, God, I really hope that doesn't happen, um, like, legally. Um, you know, if if they are, are an offender, they have to um, be put on the registry, right? They have to be, they have to live a certain proximity away from a school and all these things. As a woman, if I enter into a men's bathroom, a man can call the cops and I could be arrested if I don't leave and things like that. Um, but with um, a trans person, it's like, 
that's not set in place. Like there doesn't seem to be any boundaries Love really. Ball, right? You know, I can't really call and report a trans uh, a, a trans woman who comes into the bathroom um, because now there's laws to protect that. Um, but if I go into a man's bathroom, you know, it's a problem. Hmm. It's just like where are the boundaries? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the overarching question here is where are the boundaries? Where do we draw the line? So I, I, I want to mention something real, really quick there. At the, um, notice how that tagline on that, that news thing said, born Wonderful. this way. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make a, a, a comparison too in Christianity. Um, you know, the whole homosexual movement is I was born with this type of orientation. Like, why are you getting upset at me? I did not choose yeah. this. This is what's been given to me since my birth. But at the basic core understanding of what it means to be a Christian as well, we have that same argument as well. I was not at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I did not choose that piece of apple to eat that caused all this sin to happen. Yeah. I am born into this situation, but there's two ways to look at this. One is I'm going to embrace my lifestyle, embrace myself in this sinful world and celebrate it. Or I believe that God has a transformation message and can actually help me overcome these types of things. That, that's, that's really what the argument is. And that's why I think that we see this in a Christian sense so heavily being thrown out into our world right now because it hits at the core of what it means to be a, a follower of God. Now to a story about one of the most sensitive subjects imaginable, the abuse of children. There are some people who think attitudes and actions towards pedophiles should be adjusted. Correspondent Shannon Bream explains. A small group of psychiatrists and other mental health professionals is advocating changes to the way the American Psychiatric Association defines pedophilia in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, or DSM, saying those they call minor attracted persons are being unfairly stigmatized. Instead, a psychiatric term gets turned into something that's just a, a demonizing pejorative. Uh, that troubles me. Wow. So, I mean, I don't believe that Glenn Beck was making some outlandish prediction. You know, we're, we're seeing it happen step by step. And even what's socially acceptable on Netflix, this is their official YouTube channel. This is the show that they show on Netflix. And I mean, you have, this is a, it's a show about prepubescent children who are going through puberty and there's scenes of them naked. I mean, are we really trying to normalize this, entertain ourselves with children and sexuality and we're mi mixing this and, and I've tried to speak out against this show on social media and was attacked for it. Don't talk about my favorite show. I wish this show was out when I was a kid because I've learned so much from it or I would have learned so much from it if I was, you know, raised on this. Well, you know, statistically we know that, that teens um, say that they actually learn a lot about sexuality from the media. It's, yeah. it's one of their primary sources of information. And so it, that kind of doesn't surprise me, you know, because people feel like they're at a, a lack of information. And it really falls back on the parents is at some point you need to be communicating these things to your children and teaching them about sexuality, teaching them about biology and helping them understand uh, their responsibility um, in this world and their responsibility to God and, and you know how to behave appropriately how to take care of your body all those things but if it's not being taught at home of course you're gonna look for it somewhere you know and there are a myriad of opinions on the internet so Netflix even showed a movie called Desire where the opening scene had like a 12 year old girl pleasing herself and and the scene was on the movie and it's like are we getting away with this now? This would be considered child pornography, straight up. But now this is the norm, entertainment. Man, I really question the parents of these kids that would allow them to be on a show like this. Yeah. Did you read it? The, no. the mothers were on the set. Oh, they have to be. Oh, yeah. When you're under a certain age, I think it's 18 and under, your mother ha or father has to be on set with you. They are, they are agreeing to this kind of activities happening. Yeah. This is not somebody that's dropped off and allowed to do whatever. And there's a lot of exposing going on now of pedophilia in Hollywood, and you know, they're just loving this stuff. But they have to though, you know? Their kids might be taken away if they don't do what the kid tells them they want to do. It's a valid point.
In the opening scenes, two little girls who look to be about seven and nine are playing horse on pillows. The older girl begins to obviously masturbate as a younger child watches. The camera even takes a scene, this scene into a close-up of the child's face in slow motion, moving up and down and panting like a porn star. The scene is graphic and includes an orgasm. There's one thing that came to mind, you know, the, the aftermath of all of this. Let's say this does, and I don't even know if it has already become law where children are literally being taken away from their parents because of X, Y, and Z. Um, who's taking care of these kids? Where are these kids going? What's happening to them? You know? Wh wh yeah. Where does that re responsibility fall? Is, is the government to ready to take care of all these kids who are yeah. under 18 or doing whatever or have the understanding that I can do whatever I want? Why do they need somebody to take care of them if they have the capability yeah. to call their own shots? And imagine those kids as, as adults. If, if they're not able to fall under the rule of their parents, what makes you think they're going to fall under the rule of the law later on in life? That's a good point. And there's no set standard, so the Bible's out of the question. He's saying this is a sexual orientation, like being heterosexual, like being homosexual. It's not something that can be changed. Is that accurate? Yeah, he's saying it's an orientation fixed from birth, which some of the research is showing now. It's, it's hard to measure because, you know, children don't have sex or look at pornography or all the things that we might use to measure sexual orientation. So we really don't know. But, but an orientation is different from a compulsion. Right. And one of the things we know about pedophiles is that they are often compulsion compulsive. By the way, pedophilia is when there's more than five years age difference between the perpetrator and the victim, and the victim is prepubescent. Yes. So l let's call him someone who, who has a sexual orientation towards children. We don't know if he's really a pedophile. I'm going to bring him in. His uh, name is Todd. This is the man who wrote the article. He says he is a pedophile. He is a moderator for a website, Virtuous Pedophiles, viverped.org. And uh, Todd, you were a young teenager when you first realized you were attracted to children. Is that accurate? That's correct. And what, and what did you do to combat this? Uh, how, how are we, I mean, I think some people would be skeptical when you say I've controlled these urges. Well, when I was 13, I repressed a lot of it. I kind of felt like it was a, uh, uh, you know, it was something that I would get past eventually. And, so I didn't really dwell on it too much. And Todd, was, and Todd, you had sexual abuse in childhood. Is that accurate? Yes. A and you became a drug addict also, right? Yeah, but that had to do with uh, when I was depressed and... Well, but being unregulated, being traumatized, that that's, you know, most... I, I would say 100% of my patients, well, for sure. If you had bad enough addiction that you needed to see me when I was running a program, you had physical or sexual or both abuse in childhood. That's just the way it goes. But, but so drug addiction is set up by this many times. My question then is, how do you know what you did when you were loaded? Well, I never got that uh, high. I took a few hydrocodone just to kind of deal with the pain. I was working out uh, every day, um, you know, so I was in physical pain a lot from that because I was depressed and you know when you're depressed uh, you your brain doesn't uh, deal with the you know doesn't produce the chemicals that that um, alleviates pain. Todd, so. Todd I want to I want to get uh, some input from our audience here if you don't mind yes sir go ahead. I just have a question about what support exists for that if we're saying that it is like alcoholism is there programs is there support to prevent people that have come out as saying, like, this is something I'm well, inclined towards. I think towards. that's part of the this issue. This is what he's doing. That's do we the help? main thing. Well, there, I, he's creating a community. He's right. creating a community so that if you have these feelings as opposed to acting out on them, which is the horrible crime, that means that a child is being put in that position, yeah. you go to this community and you try and work through it with other people. And, and your, it's also dealing with but, the mental health issues that we don't deal with in this Is he going to well. the community for treatment or is he going to the community to talk about having sex with children? It's like a drunk log at an AA meeting. It, like, Virtual pedophile. So, so what does that mean? That no. you're a pedophile. Virtuous. Oh, I think virtuous. he said virtuous. I think this was an episode on Law and Order SVU, where there's this whole organization set up. You know, look but don't touch. Virtuous pedophiles. So they they understand who they are and they kind of own it and and are okay with it. They would never. They know. They understand it's wrong. So they would never touch a child. Um, but but they observe it. I, some of them do, I believe so, yeah. I mean, but, this is from watching the show, but I'm sure it's a I real guess thing. what are they These observing? Is it just they... children? Hmm? Is it just children that they're observing? 
to pleasure themselves, yes, yeah. but they would never and, touch a and, child. And, and under almost every single circumstance that I know in this country, that's illegal. That's child mm -hmm. pornography, yes. and you will totally get well, busted. Well, yeah, that's why they got shut down at the end of the day. But I'm just saying, from a virtuous pedophile, they're thinking, you know, this is who I am. So it's okay to watch, but should, I would just never touch a child. That is but, just like you know, going up to that forbidden tree and well, I just want to touch it, you know, it, it's, mm. it's like a gateway it's drug, happen. you know, right. it's like if you allow this or maybe another step, you know, they're just going to crave the real thing. Well, I really want the real thing, you know. something different, isn't it, I suppose? You don't normally see two blokes walking on all fours, do you? I don't buy it, I promise. <laughs> I thought they were doing it for some uh, charity oh. or a cause. If it is not, then... <laughs> I think it jollies things up no end. More the merrier. What is actually going on? Come on, puppies. Secret life of the human. Public. Okay. I mean, off of just observing this, you know, I think God made a distinct separation between the animals and the humans, and this is just dragging humanity down to an animalistic level. And I mean, this is just—it's it, quite sad. But because even those who believe that we're all on the same playing field, you know, humans and animals, they wouldn't agree with this. Yeah, I mean, you know, species can't even breed, cross-breed between the species and, and, you know, this is just... Are you yeah. sure? <laughs> yeah. Who knows, man? Oh my goodness. So, Different show. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, if we must accept that these people are animals, the, the opposite gender, this guy identifies as a child. Who's to tell this guy he cannot have a relationship with another child? I mean, even 13-year-olds date, right? What's interesting is he looks young in the face and how much makeup he's wearing to try and make himself look younger, you yeah. know? Check it out. Well, Brett documented a day in the life of his infantilism. Take a look. This is something I wanted to show you guys. The crib was made by one of my best friends. I got the uh, crib design from uh, online um, for an actual adult baby crib. The crib altogether was around $350 to $500. Money well spent, in my opinion. Makes you happy, boy. This is the chair I made right after my crib. Um, it's a high chair. It's uh, three and a half feet off the ground. This probably costs around $250 to $400 to do all together. I throw stuff off here, I have tantrums, I eat, I get messy. Ooh. Mm. More? Yeah. Oh. The food was on the tray, I'm, I'm, I'm in my baby chair and I'm, I'm good to go. Dude, where, uh, where are we going, man? He's not alone, this was just the one, like, shortest clip I could find, basically. Well, I guess I guess my question is, if you are uh, an infant, I'm assuming he doesn't drive, because um, why would he need a license? You know, children don't drive, yeah. uh, and there are other rights and responsibilities as an adult that Do would be revoked. I'm um, guessing. <clears throat> now, now the, the, I'm going to go back to this same sort of thing. I suppose that if you want to live your life this way, that you have the right to live your life that way. No. Uh, I, you know, as crazy as we Dude, may think, think this of is, society, though. but if, but if as crazy as we think this is, that's the freedom that we all extend to everyone else. Where I find it to be a problem is if that is now forcing his belief system or anything else on everyone else. You don't have to live your life that way, and you you don't even have to engage in that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But if if that's what he really truly feels, and he wants to live his life accordingly to that, and he wants to be a baby, he should be able to do that. <laughs> I agree with that. Okay. I mean, this transgender thing, you remember they said at the beginning on Bill Nye, it's not just adults, there's kids now. And it's being celebrated. This kid was on um, USA Today or something, you know, the Today Show, and they paraded him out, and he's all dancing around flamboyant like a woman. 
and and they're just uh, praising him for being who he is. But this was a clip that I found. You know, he's not with his parent. This is not his parent. This is some adult alone on live webcam. Does anybody know what ketamine is? You ever heard of it? Sounds familiar, but I'm not recalling. So we're four adults. We don't even know what ketamine is. I want you to check out this clip real quick. Anyone can do drag. Everyone can do drag. Everyone can Your drag mom can do drag. No genders. You can be male, female, any, or none. What has this world come to? It's come to a world where drag kids actually exist. And people do ketamine on a couch. People do ketamine on a couch. And this kid goes. People do ketamine on a couch. He knew what it was. Ketamine is a medication mainly used for starting and maintaining anesthesia. It induces a trance-like state while providing pain relief, sedation, and memory loss. Other uses include uh, for chronic pain, sedation, and intensive care and depression. He snorted. He's with someone who's not his parent, an adult, on camera, and, and this kid's being praised. Desmond is amazing, is his name, his stage name. What? See. Bella right. Noche, putting the P in LGBT P club. You should eat some food, little nibba. But I'm getting, I'm getting hate comments. Does this mean I'm famous now? What has this world come to? It's come to a world where drag kids actually exist. This is a 21 and up club. He has men hooting and hollering and giving him money. Disturbing to watch. This is New wow. York City. It doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl, like there's of just certain things, children. They actually have, in New York, Manhattan, they have a huge picture of his face because he's like a celebrity. Now, this is a club called Oasis in New York City, 21 and up. Old men giving him money as he strips. How is this even happening? I is don't this see how that's legal. Underground, because that? that's, yeah, that's well, not legal. Well, it's on camera and they announced yeah. the, the club wow. name. It's a transgender club. See, there we go again with boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> I literally think that there is probably way more of this going on than what we're even exposed to mm -hmm. in little media clips like this. Uh, this is this is where this end game is bringing everyone to. Uh, there's no way to have a clear, distinct line what's right and what's wrong. And I mean, where's this kid's parents? Well, well yeah, he's what? traveling around a lot and hanging out with a bunch of transgender people on their webcast and all this. And there's nothing there's nothing being done about this. This isn't like some underground video. Like he's a celebrity, and the club is well known and nothing's being done about it. This is just accepted now. And here he is with this guy named Michael, who if you've ever seen the movie Party Monster, they started the club kid scene where all they did was get messed up on drugs and dress up like, uh, you know, they express themselves through clothing. The interesting thing about this video is the artwork that he is that's standing behind him. This guy painted it, Michael painted it, and this word. With this is the Desmond is Amazing episode. Our special guest, the and amazing Desmond. All the way Does he seem intoxicated? Drove through rush hour traffic to get here. Hot, hot, hot. It's hot tea. It's 9.40 p.m. and he doesn't have to go to school tomorrow. He doesn't? The date rate date drug. drug. Whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> This is the guy who he's sitting next to. This is his artwork. Some of it's kind of scary. Was that Mickey Mouse with a swastika? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at this. Oh, wow. Uh, for the state exam. No, he just took one of those before uh, starting. Well, we should introduce, we should explain to the viewers who Desmond is. Desmond is the world's youngest club kid, and we challenge you as the viewer out there to find a younger club kid. Will they find one? Mm -mm. No. Wow. They're calling him a club kid. He knows what ketamine is. He imitated snorting it. Now he's hanging out with these guys. Their whole life is clubbing. 
you see the, the date rape drug on the painting and he, in my opinion, looks... He looks hot. Intoxicated on something, yeah. He does. Wow. Wow, and there's, yeah, the, the, the makeup, the lipstick, I mean, you know, the reason why females have the dark and the smeared mm -hmm. is, is, is really because it looks like they've been they're up a working all night girl. working. Yeah, they're yeah. working girl, and this is disturbing. But he is being praised. He's being invited on all the shows. Please welcome Desmond Naples, AKA Desmond is amazing. <laughs> so, this man, is this the, the is being word, shared on Instagram, and is that him, the kid? That's not him. That's another one. The word boundaries could just keeps popping into my mind. It's just like you know, this is a child. Okay, if the child identifies as transgendered, okay, and you even you know allow the child to dress a certain way and all these things, fine. But now you're taking a step further and immersing him into this culture. Um, letting him do the same thing that grown adults consenting able to consent adults are doing and saying that it's fine for this child to, to do it and you know nothing's nothing's, <laughs> nothing's being done about it. The, the, the brain is not fully developed until the mid-20s mm. I think and even I mean f nobody's gonna argue even psychological scientists will tell you that a child's brain is not even can't make these logical decisions so I mean this this really, I think that, that there should be some legal action against their parents. I mean, this should be illegal. This should be legal. Like, absolutely. Interviewed and photographed by Queen Lassatia, like for Hut magazine. This isn't just somebody in their basement Instagramming something like these are well-known people and they're, it's in a magazine. Like this is where we're going. This is paraded and praised. The, these pedophiles, they're, they're, fantasizing but they're not acting out. Snopes is a website that they they love to shut down conspiracies like they will debunk anything but they really do their research and there was a claim that child sex doll products were briefly available on Amazon. They found out it was true. This lady took a screenshot of it. The, the idea is that this can uh, medicate a pedophile without them acting out. Like I said, this is a gateway drug. This is giving them a taste of what they've been fantasizing about and they're only gonna keep pushing to get the real thing. So we hope you were blessed by this video. We just feel a burden that we need to talk about this because chances are there's probably a pedophile in every church and you don't even know it. And this stuff's getting more normalized. So we just feel like you need to talk to your children about this. Be prayerful about when's the right appropriate age to talk about it but it just needs to be addressed because we need to be vigilant. We need to know what's, what's out there. So help us to help you. Write a comment. Let us know what you think about the video. Tell us what we should be talking about because we want to be relevant. We want to keep informing people. So click the subscription, click the notification bell, and keep coming back for more. Keep commenting. If you want to support this ministry, you can do so through Patreon. And we, we have a lot of cool perks for our donors. We love you guys. Keep coming back. God bless you.